The trouble with steam pumps, part 7. Final adjustment and test running of the Southworth Engines large duplex steam pump. Here's a useful tip. If you need to amplify the exhaust outlet, particularly when you're trying to check the timing, just point the exhaust pipe at something with a sharp edge. This is the plastic cap from the water bottle. On the water outlet, I've temporarily fitted a valve. This allows me to pressurise the system to simulate the pump actually pumping water into the boiler. And here is my water pressure indicator. This piece of silicone rubber tubing is getting a bit weak. It's been used many times for feeding steam engines with steam. A few years ago, I was testing an engine on the bench using compressed air. And a bubble like this appeared in the silicone rubber tubing. So I ignored it until it got really big and went bang. And the resultant loud noise was incredibly loud. In fact, it made my ears whistle for about an hour. This is not so bad though. If the pipe bursts with water in it, all I'm going to do is get wet. This is quite a short video because most of it consisted of me with my great big hands adjusting these nuts back and forth. And here you see the final setting. Time for a bit more oil, I think, in the air fitting. Steam engine cylinder lubrication is essential. These nuts are not tightened hard up against the levers. There needs to be a little bit of end float. If you do tighten them up, then as the pump is working, you can see the valve rods bending. In the last episode, I showed my friend Roger's pump running. Roger's engineering standard is very accurate. The engineering standard on this pump is OK, it's fine. But that particular pump that Roger made was a bit of a freak. He'd made a few other pumps that didn't sound like that one. I'm going to show you something interesting that you can apply to most exhaust systems from steam engines. But if you are using steam, you obviously can't use a plastic cap. In the past, I've done quite a lot of experimentation with exhaust systems from steam engines. I once read an article in the Model Engineer written by Mr. LBSC, Lillian Lawrence. And he suggested that if your engine was a poor steamer, silver solder a piece of sixteenth of an inch diameter steel across the centre of the blast pipe. By splitting the exhaust blast, this causes the exhaust steam going up the chimney to pull more air through the fire. Unfortunately, when I tried it on a locomotive, which was actually steaming all right, it burnt a big hole in the fire grate. Now know that this steam pump works perfectly well against pressure, I can remove the valve on the water outlet. And now the flow into the water bottle is unrestricted, and the pump sounds very different. The sound of the pump and the timing of the pump alters if I restrict the flow of the output by squeezing the pipe. And this clearly shows that the sound of the engine is not 100% down to what's happening in the steam cylinders and valve chest. In the water chest there are 8 valves. And for this pump to work perfectly, all of the valves must not leak, but in reality one or two of them probably do. I'm going to stop the pump for a moment and put some more oil into the airline. Even though I'm running on compressed air, I'm still using steam oil because ordinary lubricating oil can actually make the o-rings in the cylinder sticky. At the beginning of this video, I showed how I used this plastic cap to make the exhaust louder so that I could hear the exhaust beat more clearly. And it works fine, but I would like to try one or two alternatives. Before that, there is a health and safety warning. Do not do this. Do not put your fingers anywhere near the moving parts of a steam engine. I'm only doing it because I'm depriving some poor village of its idiot. I'm actually doing it so I can feel the power of the power strokes to make sure that they're even, and they are. So this adjustment is about the best I can do with this pump. By moving the position and the angle of the plastic cap, the exhaust tone sounds quite different. You can use anything with an edge, even a piece of brass angle works. By moving the piece of angle you can see how much the exhaust tone and volume differs. This is not how a chuff pot works, that is just a tube that amplifies the exhaust. Here's the exhaust sound without anything in the way. I'll try a plastic box. When I get the plastic box precisely in the right position, the exhaust gets a lot louder. I think the fact that this is a box which resonates is the reason why it makes the exhaust blast a bit louder. 
I think the exhaust blast is quite even really, I can't complain, this will be fine. One of my regular viewers by the name of Bruce said to me, why did I never turn up the exhaust sound? Well, actually, I do. So just for you, Bruce, here is the exhaust sound that turned up when I stopped speaking. That's the end of this short series. I'd like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Are you ready for this, Bruce? I'm turning up the volume now. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.